Monica, thanks so much for sitting down with me. Much appreciated. We are here uh, attending the meeting of the UPO Working Group for uh, Biochemical and Molecular Techniques. Is uh, BASF using these techniques? I'm happy you asked this question, Marcel. Definitely. Uh, we, BASF Vegetable Seeds, uh, are using biochemical and molecular uh, tools daily in our work. Mm. Uh, we use them for the applications uh, in several departments in our company, mm. uh, in breeding, in production, in phytopathology, in quality assurance, and in legal. Uh, the work of my team is mainly focused on development and implementation mm. of uh, molecular markers uh, for quality testing mm. of uh, breeders, production, and uh, commercial seeds. Mm. Uh, we apply molecular markers for foundation seed testing, for stock seeds testing, mm. and uh, commercial testing <laughs> before mm -hmm. we sell them to our customers. Mm -hmm. uh, we develop several tests uh, for those quality checks, and uh, like, for example, trueness to type test, uh, inbred detection, all uh, variety purity. Depends on the crop, uh, we might uh, apply different uh, tests or technology as we work with several crops and they show different uh, heterozygosity level. Uh, so, for example, the tests which you apply for tomato, they are not built in the same way like those which you apply for onion or for carrot, for example. Okay. Yeah. And um, also the other scientists in our company, uh, they work a lot on the development and implementation of markers in the breeding. Uh, they work on the trade link markers, such as, for example, uh, resistances to different diseases. Mm -hmm. And those are later on used by our breeders in their breeding programs. So how are these uh, tools and techniques uh, helping the plant breeders? So by applying uh, those technologies together with the other, like, for example, uh, cybology techniques, uh, breeders can save even a couple of years in their breeding programs mm -hmm. and uh, they can deliver varieties uh, much faster to the market. Uh, those tools are fast, uh, they are accurate, uh, they are easy to apply, easy to measure. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, but breeders can use those techniques to select uh, plants which carry particular traits in their genome mm -hmm. so they can receive the results uh, fast. And uh, also, because they can receive them directly from the laboratory, uh, they can uh, save a lot of space in the uh, greenhouse or in the fields. And uh, so they can do many more other crosses or experiments uh, mm -hmm. later on in this space. And uh, yeah, they can, they can also simply just save the, the cost of the breeding programs. That's great. But it's not just the seed companies that are using these, uh, these techniques. It's also the DUS examination offices. What do you think? Should they be using more of such tools? Definitely. I think the US offices will gain really a lot uh, by using those kinds of uh, tools. Mm. And I know that uh, some of them are using them already, like, mm. for example, Nakenbau in the Netherlands or mm. Jeves in France. Mm -hmm. uh, by applying those tools, uh, the US offices uh, yeah, could use them, for example, for calibration of uh, molecular distances in the management of varieties collections. Mm -hmm. This would lead to the decrease of the growouts, also to the cost savings, and it would make it easier to manage those collections. Mm -hmm. So, yeah, it would be also uh, easier to compare the data between the years. And uh, if, for example, uh, all the US offices or the majority of them would go for the same technology, like, for example, SNP technology, then it would allow the data centralization or data uh, comparison between the US offices and the exchange of the information. But yeah, at the end, it has to be a decision made by the US offices. Yeah, obviously. Uh, do you see a trend? Yes, yeah, so I, I see it that we are using less and less of the grow out methods uh, with, yeah, every year. Uh, we actually only use them uh, nowadays for a confirmation of the marker results in exceptional situations. Mm -hmm. Uh, although, of course, we still see our varieties uh, in a trialing process, uh, but it doesn't mean that we have to use, uh, that we have to put our plants into the grow out uh, just for the quality check or for the management of the varieties collections. And of course, we don't know what uh, all the other companies are doing, mm -hmm. but we all know which uh, techniques are available in the market. And uh, those are mainly PCR-based technologies or sequencing-based technologies. And depends on the application, 
uh, or PCR-based or hybridization-based arrays or sequencing technologies can be used. Uh, I know that also in the US offices, they are using those technologies ne next to the growouts more and more. And this is the topic we discuss uh, a lot in the BMT meeting. Mm -hmm. So uh, we discuss the phenotypic uh, distances and molecular distances in a combination uh, together in varieties management collection as uh, model two. Also characteristic specific uh, molecular markers as model one and uh, calibration of molecular distances uh, in varieties management collection as uh, model three. We're seeing quite some differences between the US examination offices. Some are very far advanced and using these techniques a lot. Others are hesitating a little bit, are a bit more behind. Um, how do you think we can bridge that gap? This is a difficult question, Marcel, as it is clearly linked to the, to the finance and to the resources. Uh, but for sure, meetings like uh, today uh, yeah, give us opportunity to talk to each other, to exchange mm -hmm. the information between each other, to learn from each other. Mm -hmm. And the more we will uh, we will discuss, we will talk and, and learn from each other, the easier it will be to bring the <laughs> build the bridges. Mm -hmm. uh, also, hopefully, in the future, when the cost will drop down, the countries which are lagging behind, they can uh, catch up and uh, yeah, and enable the exchange of the information. Mm -hmm. So you mentioned uh, the costs is obviously uh, a challenge for, for the US uh, examination offices. Are there other challenges? Yeah, I see uh, challenges mainly in the harmonization between the, the US offices, mm -hmm. also like in cost, what you said, uh, because not all the countries they can, they can afford, even the bioassays or, or markers. Uh, I also see the challenges in the legal agreement uh, mm -hmm. on the ownership. Okay. Uh, yeah, I think UPOF needs to cover that part. Uh, so work on the exchange of the information uh, with keeping in mind the future exchange of the molecular information for the, mm -hmm. for the US testing. Um, also from the technical, uh, I see the thresholds and the distinctiveness. So, for example, if we see the um, two parental lines, which are um, similar to each other in 99.9%, mm. do we call those parental lines the same or do we con call them different? Yeah. <laughs> or uh, which uh, technology should we all use? Mm -hmm. We know now that they are changing with time. Uh, I think here understanding the heterogeneity and the heterozygosity of the crop is extremely important. Mm -hmm. Seeing these, these very exciting developments uh, and the fact that the costs are going down, uh, do you think that uh, all variety testing over time will or perhaps should go all the way to, uh, to molecular tools? So in our company, the majority of the crops, uh, the variety testing uh, move actually already into the markers uh, completely. Mm -hmm. uh, in the US offices, uh, I would say in the future, for sure. For now, I see the combination, the phenotypic and the genotypic, uh, and I see it is happening now. And I think this is very positive. Mm -hmm. Excellent. Thank you, Monica. Thank you, Marcel.